All right, everybody. It's Slappy McPhee. I'm here with Neon Lightning. Yeah, hello. John Manning. Hello. And Qbert. Hey, what's up? And this is our latest edition of the Arena Conclave, and we are going to be doing a special three to four part series to preview our new release that is forthcoming. Uh, we're going to go ahead and break it up with the, the agendas for each of the videos. Uh, but first of all, um, Qbert is doing a capture for us so you can go ahead and see what's going on. And we're kind of doing this kind of like a preview, you know, um, preview and coffee kind of situation, right? So that's, we've got, uh, like I said, with Neon here, um, who's one of John's newer testers, and Qbert, which of course, you know, he's uh, done a bunch of stuff for us on YouTube for the preview videos. And then of course, John, he's a, the lead tester. Uh, what you're seeing here is our new default theme. It's called GHC by Will Allen. And uh, just a real quick note on this. Qbert's actually got his VRAM set up right now to 500. Um, so that uh, should hopefully be a pretty good universal VRAM setting for a lot of the, the newer, more demanding themes. But we'll get through that as we go on. So one of the first things we need to talk about, right, is the versioning. Um, we're going to be calling this Thera 3.0. Now, some people might say, well, wait a minute, you are at 1.6, what, what the hell happened? You know, um, whatever happened to 2.0? Well, for those that have been in the community for a while now, they saw and, and experienced the fact that we busted our, our high end, uh, excuse me, our, our hind ends uh, for several months last year. And we didn't get to a place where we felt comfortable due to some kernel level issues for X input for controllers, a bunch of Bluetooth issues and, and other things and performance issues. So we shelved that until um, a bunch of stuff gets squared away. Uh, that being said, we are on the latest version of the 3.10 kernel now. Um, we were with the 1.6 as what it was previously, we were around 300, 350 commits behind. So we've caught up tremendously for that. Um, there's going to be a lot for us to talk about. And as I think of different things or the guys do, they may chime in. And, but uh, otherwise, um, some of the major changes is, is that this is an official release for us for forking RetroPie, right? So uh, even though we're still getting a lot of um, information and data and code from RetroPie itself, um, we've kind of split off. So you're going to see a lot of things that have changed. And that's mainly um, just due to us wanting to expand and grow. And then also from what we were receiving from the community, you're right, um, saying that, hey, you know, you guys should have your own thing. So one of the things, and we'll go over this in a future episode of getting into the more of the nuts and the bolts on the underside is, uh, for example, the RetroPie folder's gone. Um, it's not RetroPie anymore. Uh, we're still using Pi Gaming as the main user, but it's now uh, Retro Arena for a folder, for example. Uh, the password has been changed for the user account, you know, things like that. And we'll, we'll be going over that as we go through these episodes. Uh, also as well, the mounting method. That's kind of changed as well um, to a pretty significant point. So. I'll turn this over to John and to Qbert to kind of discuss that more because they've done a lot more heavy lifting in regards to working with mounting uh, external drives. So if you guys kind of want to chit chat about it a little bit. Yeah, so um, I, got, I have to say initially I wasn't uh, the biggest fan. I, I liked the RetroPie mount method, but um, it, it, was, it, was, it was buggy and the way we do it now eliminates a lot of the problems. Um, especially with the, uh, um, you know, transferring over of uh, the files and stuff like that. People were saying that when they were plugging in, uh, they would be missing the whole setup menu. You know, that's that's no longer an issue, right? I mean, the only thing that transfers over now in that in that uh, retro arena folder is your ROMs, right? So you don't have to worry about any of that. You just you, all you have to do is you have to put your BIOS on that um, SD card, your ROMs in that uh, retro arena folder. And you're good to go. You won't have any issues with your setup menu. You won't have any any problems with that at all. So um, I really like the way we did it. I think it's nice and easy, and I think it alleviates a lot of problems. One big headache reducer from before 
is now we actually have it verbose so that we can actually see when it's done. Yeah, that's a really great point, Neon. That's definitely a good point to to uh, let everyone sure. know. Uh, what are your thoughts on it, Q? Runs pretty good compared to what it used to. It used to took, take a while. Um, everything runs smooth. I don't have any problems with it not finding the BIOS or anything like it used to. I used to be annoyed by this settings menu not coming over as well, but that's <laughs> no longer the case. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that actually brings up another good point. Um, Qbert's already gone into it, but we no longer call it the RetroPie menu, right? We're just calling it a generic settings menu. And as you can see on the left, the structure of the menu it's, has changed dramatically as well. So I'm going to go ahead and have uh, Q go through this and kind of just do some brief overviews of the different menu options. Um, as you can see, things are broken up, uh, be it by media, by network, by sound, etc. All right. Uh, first thing on media is the bezel project. Uh, I recommend everybody install it. That way you have some nice um, um, artwork on the side so you don't have the black bars. Um, that's only for the live retro uh, cores, though. Um, this is the case config. Um, this is for anybody that purchased the OGST case. You can set um, what kind of image files you want and what theme. Uh, we might as well go in there into it now, I guess. All right. Um, right here is uh, the first option is the case image selector. If you go into there, you select which um, um, theme that you want to use. We have, if we go back, sorry, hold on. If we go back, you see you have the greatest hits option, the retro arena, the Wii uh, retro arena, and the retro arena um, theme from Hursty. Um, by default, the retro arena by uh, ours is by default. And after you do that, if you um, have artwork for all your games, if you used Motion Blue, you're going to select Motion Blue box art, cart art, snaps, or wheels. Uh, same with Skyscraper, Regular Scraper, and Stealth Scraper. So basically, wherever, whichever one of these coordinates with where your uh, screenshots are, select it. You can also disable it if you don't want anything at all. Am I missing anything, guys? Uh, only thing, so. yeah. Only thing about it or with it is, is that we now have repos um, on GitHub for these different various things, right? So uh, we're going to try to encourage the community to become uh, a larger part, right? Um, and as you see, when we go through the various media, we've got repos for the screen, you know, and we'll, and we'll be sharing how to do your, your different, you know, how to set up your content. You know, no, we're still not really doing GIFs. I don't see us doing GIFs, um, mainly for performance reasons. Uh, there are other distros out there that, um, you know, case in point, Supreme Odroid, I've heard from a couple people, they say, hey, well, I don't see any performance hits by using a GIF running in the background all the time. Well... We're trying to build a distribution that even though it's robust, at the same time, it's lean, right? So, you know, we're all about the performance of everything. And that means that, you know, at the end of the day, you're not sitting there staring at that OGST case and screen, right? While you're playing your games. It's just kind of something there, something cool and different. And, you know, so we just want to make sure that everybody's aware of that, right? So we, we're going to see as you go through, you know, we got these different repositories, um, the, the, the different ES themes, right? And stuff like that. We have, and, and Qbert will be showing it, but we've got, we have a few couple themers or a few themers that have come on board and they've been able to do more detailed and more complex, especially with transparency style themes than you used to see before because we're being able to leverage the fact that this is a more powerful hardware platform. It'll be the same thing when we release our Rock 64 Pro build and et cetera. So I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead and go back, uh, back to where you're going with this, Q. Oh, are you are you talking, Q? Maybe you have mute, mute turned on. Sorry about that. I had mute on. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, the kids were being loud. Okay, so basically, um, it has all the regular retro pie themes that you guys are used to seeing, but it also has our own uh, set of themes uh, specifically for the retro arena, and those are listed at the top. 
but you can also install all your other uh, third-party themes, I guess I could call them. Yeah, and another good point with this, right, is that one of the reasons why we have the Retro Arena ones at the top isn't just to showcase, hey, that this is the Retro Arena, right? It's ones that we know that have been getting set up to be able to handle uh, and display art and content for all the systems we're supporting compared to, for example, the Raspberry Pi. So that's just something to be aware of for the users out there that if you decide to use, uh, say, the uh, SNES theme from Ruckage, you're going to have a lot of blank spaces in there because especially if you start adding a lot of these uh, newer systems because we ended up adding 30-some uh, systems um, to this new build. So uh, we've also got the Hersey's theme and randomizer, so we'll go ahead and go over that next queue. Um, it's actually pretty cool. Um, you guys probably, anybody that's in this, you know, into RetroPie at all has heard of Hursty and has heard of his themes. So this one basically just every time you boot up Emulation Station, it's a new theme. Um, there's like 109 so far that I've counted <laughs> that were on his GitHub that it goes through so far. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, I recommend the Ghouls and Ghosts one if it comes up, guys. Um, I don't know if you guys saw that one. Did any of you see that? I have not seen it. It's really cool, and the uh, the ghouls and the ghosts, what ghouls and ghosts one is really really cool. Um, this is the jukebox config. Um, this is going to be on another episode though, right? We're going to do a whole little thing showing the jukebox option that we have now. Yep, yep, that'll be on the future. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, these are your launching videos. So these are like when you, whenever you launch something, it'll automatically launch that before you press the um, launching option. You know, the button for the launching options, like to change your emulator or anything. Um, if you want, I'll show you here. Hold on. Just get it as like Sega 32. Yeah. So while he's while Q's going in and doing that, that this, this is, one is the, a loading screen right here. Yeah. There's a loading screen. So then you have the option to change to different themes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. My bad. That's okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure that you know we give proper um, recognition, right? We a big thank you. There's a lot of things in here with a new build that comes from Motion Blue and the hard work by Dave Marty, especially. Um, and he's given us um, the privilege to be able to have this in our official build. So, you know, yes, we had to do a bunch of tweaking for our build compared to what he had on his regular Motion Blue. But um, something that's also been enhanced with this is that not only is it a launching video, but you also have the ability for an exit video. Uh, we have by default uh, a couple different exit video options, but it's just something to kind of give it a little bit more of a flashy or, you know, um, you know, not so much of a jarring transition back into the emulation station front end. Thanks, Dave. So Q, you might be talking to mute again. I'm on mute again. Yes, I'm sorry. Kids were being loud again. My bad. <laughs> all right. So by default, uh, super simple is installed, uh, but there is a bigger, um, much uh, nicer, if you ask me, um, the Retro Arena version. I can just install it real quick since I'm connected to the network, and I can show you guys what it looks like. Hopefully, it doesn't take too long if you want to start uh, on something else while I load this up. Yeah, so um, part of what else we're going to talk about, um, we're not going to necessarily – we might go into it to show it, but we've got the latest version of RetroArch, which now features the uh, Ozone. Uh, for the RetroArch GUI, right? And that's the new theme. Uh, you can switch back to the traditional R GUI as well, but I believe that Ozone actually has a dark and a light. Um, I, I use the dark setting. I, oh man, I love Ozone so much. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it looks like it's a heck of a lot cleaner. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, while... He's doing this installation. Um, I guess we can kind of hit one of the elephants in the room with the, the transition is that, um, you know, there's going to be or there already has been some questions, you know, hey, is this going to require a new flash? And yes, this will require a new flash. Um, there's just so many changes to include structural changes, etc. that, you know, with us kind of forging out on our on our own uh, path. There's just no way around it. So that means as well that if you have version 1.5 or 1.6 and you notice it says final, 
um, we will be implementing a message similar to what you might see, for example, with, well, not might, but you would see with RetroPy when they moved over to Stretch uh, for the operating system version. Um, you know, you will have a notification that it states that updates are no longer being maintained and that in order to update, you will have to move to the new version. Um, the old version, uh, once we go public with this, will be deprecated, so it will no longer be available either. Um, we are looking to actually uh, put this out to our Patreons by this weekend, so today's the 13th recording this. I'll probably get this uh, video up, post it up tomorrow, uh, depending upon what I got going on the rest of the evening. Um, but yeah, then the Patreons will have seven to ten days of exclusive access, and then um, we will go ahead and move things over. So talking about that, just real quick here, well, before he goes into something, you know, we definitely want to say thank you to everybody in the community, right? Uh, of course, obviously the Patreons are a big help, but you know, when we started this off, we had uh, Retro Humanoid, and he was there. You know, um, he did a lot of our media for us, and we were thankful for that. Uh, he moved on, and uh, you know, Dave Marty's done a whole ton of stuff here, and you know, everybody on the team. You know, one of the things that I just can't say enough is that there's just so many people to thank that you know it's it's almost impossible. So I'm well, um, gonna forget somebody. You're always gonna forget somebody. Exactly right, John. That's that's they're, perfectly. They're right. not. They're never forgetting. They're never forgetting. They're never forgotten. We we always we appreciate everything everybody does for us, but yeah. you know when we're there putting out videos and we're trying to get out content, get out information to people. You you're in the middle of talking sometimes. You know people people just get lost in the mix. You know. Oh yeah, definitely so, and that's that's a great point. So here you saw the starting video, and then um, you know, as again, saying thanks, John has been doing a, a whole bunch of work with different things and you got to see the launching video and then also the exit video there. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let's go ahead and scroll on back to the, uh, the settings menu and, and see about wrapping that up. Okay. Um, this is your remove media. Um, this will go through and, um, remove any system media that doesn't match up. Um, I've used it. I haven't lost anything, but I would always back up stuff <laughs> just in case, but it works really well. Saves a lot of space. These are splash screens. This is all part of the original. Yep, you guys but, and actually real quick to go in with the splash screens, uh -huh. we have fixed the issue with being able to do previews of video splash screens now. So that issue's uh -huh. been resolved. All right, and here's your Bluetooth setup. This is your show IP. These are all things you guys all know. This is how you'll set up your Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Here's uh, an option to toggle your background music. Um, this is your system configuration editor. This is a controller reset in case you need to blow everything away. Um, this is your system fan control. There's three options. There's um, regular, a aggressive, and well, actually, let's find out because I need to set it anyways. So. So you got default, medium, and aggressive, and I always go to aggressive. All right. This is your file manager. This is Odroid config. This is like if you need to um, free um, expand file system or anything else like that. Yeah, let's go into there real quick, though, because um, with the Odroid config, it's similar to the Raspi config. Um, you'll see that we slim down the menu options in here, and we have stuff that's specific to this uh, board. You know, when we when we do the Rock 64 uh, build, that will have something specific to itself as well. Um, however, you know, in regards to this as well, yes, like Q said, you can mainly resize your file system. Like if you move from a smaller card to a bigger card, etc. Um, and different boot options, localization, and, and all that. So we have incorporated this as a as a standard feature now. And this is the retro arena setup. Yeah, if you want to go uh, pop into there real you quick. Go ahead and see it? Yeah. yeah, there's a new breakdown, so that'd be a little confusing. Much more streamlined. You got your update scripts, you got your packages, your settings, and reboot. That's all you got. 
Um, if you look into your packages, it's really streamlined. I really like that. It's broken up into optional packages, live retro packages, standalone, um, standalone ports, and then drivers. So if you're ever to do any updates or anything else like that, and you know it's a live retro system, uh, look at that. We're gonna have to. I get. We'll have to tell uh, Galileo that port has to be fixed. The the words misspelled. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it says P R T. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just go to any of these and just update like you normally would. And um, let's just go back. If you go into settings, that's basically every setting that's in the settings menu. So. You can access it two different ways here. And then, of course, Reboot does Reboot. Okay. All right, is there anything else you want me to touch on the... Uh, do that. So just kind of touch over on the smart kiosk, because I believe that that's actually something new for us, right? Is that we... we well, I mean, working. that's part of RetroPie always. I mean, that was always part of Emulation Station. Yeah, uh, this is something that uh, I believe it was Galileo put together. Yeah, this actually it is a little bit different, so it's kind of cool. Um, he had to do some custom tweaking before it did not work, and so it does now. Um, what else do we have in here? Q. We got the soft reboot, which that's from uh, the legacy build system info is. Um, you'll you'll notice that we have these new icons, right? So we're also going to be we have a a repo for. Um, the settings menu icons. These are some new icons that uh, Galileo, um, and I have to apologize, like right now off the top of my head, I can't tell you the name of the gentleman, but um, he put a uh, feeler out there on GitHub and this gentleman responded and put together these new icons for us. So right now they're like the folder views, but you can also change it so they have, um, the icon would be similar, except instead it'll be Nintendo cartridges. Um, you know, if someone comes up with other ones, they'll be able to submit them to our GitHub, just like any of the other media. Uh, Adrian. Yeah. Adrian, I cut you off for a second. It's um, Lion Tech 1985. Ah, Lion Tech 1985. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So I think that's pretty much everything in here, right? Um, pretty much. Yeah. There, other than that, that's just the system info utility, and that's just self-explanatory. Okay, yeah. It shows cool. you your temperatures and stuff. So let's go ahead and pop back out, and we will go over to one of the new systems that I'm super excited about, which is right next door. Uh, you went a little bit far there. Uh, Retro Hub? Yeah. Or Saturn? Retro Hub. Retro. So I'm going to go ahead and let John actually talk about this because he's done all the heavy lifting on this. Um, it's an idea that I came up with, but um, he kind of made this come to fruition, and uh, you can kind of do a demo of it here, too, to show how it actually works. Uh, Q wants uh, – John talks a little bit. Yeah, so so this is pretty cool, right? So Adrian calls me up on the phone one day, and he says, you know, hey, I'm thinking about, like, uh, maybe doing Q QR codes on the screen, and uh, they'll link to, you know, YouTubers or, you know, useful websites or, you know, some good info or release notes, things, things like that. So I started looking, and I started – Trying to see if I can make QR codes, and um, I found a nice uh, a nice website that that you can make the QR codes, and they uh, they you can you can customize them, customize the colors and stuff. And then uh, I started to build, uh, you know, as if it was, were a system. And uh, then uh, Galileo came in, cleaned it up a bit, so um, you actually see if he goes to launch one of these things, Q, if you can launch one, um, it'll pop out like that. It used to just it used to just blank screen and then put you back into the uh to the menu but now it'll come up like that for uh, i think it's like 20 seconds or something like that you can scan it with your phone and it'll take you to gamester 81 in this instance it'll take you to his uh youtube channel um and you know the the, the great thing about this is this the sky's the limit really i mean you could you there's so many things you can do you know anything you can link to anything that has a web address you you can you can put on here so uh it's a re it's a really cool idea and it was actually cool to see an idea kind of you know that we had internally here you know come to life yeah so as he scrolls through if you scroll back up just a little bit um you'll see now too like uh the release notes someone can tell can go right directly to the release notes and be able to pull them up on their their phone you know after they scan that qr code um 
so that's kind of nice. Uh, we've got links to other things, and as time goes on, we're going to kind of categorize things probably. You know, with this being something so new, it'll kind of be a little bit of a learning process for us, but it's uh, from the start, I think it's going to be really, really awesome. And, you know, um, John and I kind of went over a bunch of things in here, and, um, you know, I pulled what I had, he pulled what he had for subscriptions and things, you know, so if there's other suggestions out there that have to do with retro gaming in general, you know, we're definitely going to be open to check it out. Yeah, it might get added, maybe it doesn't, you know, it's just a decision that we're going to make. So, um, now we kind of got over that, so that's pretty cool. So, what we're going to do each episode is, uh, I know we've spent a bunch of time here going over regular agenda items, but um, we're going to go over some systems. We're going to be doing a handful each time. So we're going to go ahead and start off and kind of show um, some of these these new systems that we have that we've added. So the first one's going to be the Amiga CD32. So when you manage to get down to that. You, you, you passed it. Stop. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, real quick, I mean, you know, with all these systems that we, we were adding, um, you know, I didn't know half these systems existed personally, but uh, uh, pretty, pretty cool to actually read some history up about them. So I got a little, uh, a little bit for each system that we're going to, uh, that we're going to show here just to, just to give you some interesting facts, you know. So it was released in 1993. Um, it was not officially released in the U.S. Uh, it was released in Europe, Australia, Canada, and Brazil. And it only lasted, its release was only about eight months long. So it was a short-lived console. Um, the only time that they came into the United States was, was uh, from Canada. Uh, they were never officially released here. So, But it is an interesting system, and it does deserve some respect because it's a pretty fun system, actually, when you play it. Cool. Thanks, John. Do you have anything to say on it, Neon? Have you been able to, to play around with it some, or...? I, I've been playing around and I never seen it before until it popped up on here. And I, I, I'd say it reminds me of somewhere about a, it's, it's time frame. It's like a DOS Super Nintendo somewhere in there. It's, it's pretty fun though. So is there anything in regards to system wise that, uh, Qbert that you could add uh, information like, you know, how long it takes to boot or if there's some gotchas because I do have a couple asterisks here to note that we want might want to talk about a little bit about how you need to get it up and running. Um, actually, ours, it runs right out of the box right now, but there is going to be an update to the WHD loader, which you just saw, that automatically mounts the CDs the right way. Um, but right now, out of the box, it works correct as long as you have the right format for your uh, disks. So, that's, so a, that's a good point. The, the configuration so be... that was a hard before is no longer hard. The uh, <laughs> right, so the the format is what CHD right now I think is what it is that's supported. That's, uh, LHA or LHA. LHA, okay. Hubert, are you muted again? I'm just playing. I wasn't saying anything. I just figured you guys were talking. Yeah, I'm just sorry. <laughs> yeah, oh, one thing that I do hate about the Amiga CD32 is uh, because it's uh, based basically off of Amiga games and stuff like that, there's only one button. So, uh, like uh, some, of, some of the games that were ported over, you have to press up to jump, and I really, really hate that. But uh, other than that, it's okay. Even though it has four buttons on the actual joystick, it just doesn't use them for jump. I don't know why. I have no idea why. Actually, in a couple of games I tried. Couple do, right? A couple do, yeah. It's like they like just lazy ports, you know. What I mean, it's like they just like some of them that it looks like they just took directly from the Amiga and didn't even bother changing, you know, for the jump. Like this one, for instance, I have to press up to jump, but I have four other buttons and only one button does something. <laughs> so, but it's still awesome. Good music. I can't play worth a crap, but. All right. Yeah, I think we can go ahead and. Uh... Exit out of this one. I really like how that turned out, John, on that uh, exit video. Thanks, um, man. Let's go ahead, actually, Q. Let's 
back out and we'll just do especially with how long this is take or our episode is becoming let's move to the uh uh arcadia all right arcadia arcadia 2001 released 1982 discontinued after 18 months then bandai picked it up and released it in japan and there were over 30 clones that exist of the system that's pretty crazy too and of course you know it came out in the early 80s but they call it 2001 you're kind of like what (laughs) (laughs) too much stanley crew (laughs) wreck right (laughs) so yeah so as you can see um this is one of the um the systems that's a, a legacy system of the early 80s and uh it uses advanced mess, um, right? Or is it LR mess? Advanced mess, there we go, yeah. And uh, so, you know, the, it will take some some tweaking, uh, most likely with different controls. But, you know, we're going to do as much as we can, or we have done as much as we can to streamline things to make things more user-friendly. And once again, it looks like you have it muted, Q. I didn't know if you were done talking or not. Yeah, yeah we're good. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, I had to remap it. Uh, for some reason, it didn't save my settings that I had last time. So, so as you can see, this is kind of look, looks like a pretty close to like a, almost a Pac-Man clone. but Well, it's it's basically Mousetrap. Oh, that's right. Mousetrap. Yeah. It's a little bit of Mousetrap and a little bit of uh, Ladybug at the same time. So it's like a mix of the two. There you go. All right, let's go ahead and exit out, and we'll go to Bally Astrocade. Bally Astrocade. Was it, that was featured in one of my favorite movies, National Lampoon's Vacation. <laughs> All right, so the Bally Astrocade, released in 1977 through mail order. You can only get it through mail order. 1978, it was renamed to the Bally Professional Arcade. And release the stores for a limited time. Yeah, and so once again, you know, we you can um, there's going to be different launching video packs. Um, you know, so if you want to go ahead and kind of you know use something else that's quicker, if you don't if you don't want to even use launching videos, it'll be there by default. But you can remove it and go back to traditional launching screens. Um, or you can just disable it all together, you know, just once again, it's another one of those beautiful customization options, um, you know, that emulation station and then RetroPie went with, and we're continuing on with that as, as we've enhanced things. Or you can make your own set and share it with the community, right? Oh yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay, what next? Uh, looks like we are going to move to Channel F. Channel F. Right. Channel F. At least 1976. First console to use a programmable ROM card and a microprocessor. That's pretty interesting. Huh? Made by Fairchild. Okay, I have to set this up, make sure it's set up right. Yeah, this was definitely one I had no idea even existed. Yeah, I didn't know either until Dave was (laughs) talking about it. He's like, dude... This is so cool. I found this. I can't believe yeah. how many like mi- microcomputers there were and system game systems there were. It's, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's insane. Like I did not realize most of these systems existed in the first place. <laughs> and usually it's Dave suddenly excited about something. Yeah, I mean, uh, they definitely talk about how in the 
mid 70s into the early 80s before the crash in 83 in the United States um, the video game crash that it really was the wild west of uh, you know console games and, and computer games and now I'll get it. <laughs> that is awesome epicness <laughs> <laughs> awesome <laughs> sounds like a, Dude, like sounds a big awesome. fart that's what, it just sounds like a fart <laughs> like a robot fart yeah, pretty much I was thinking robot T-Rex so. <laughs> yeah I'm not going to spend too much time on this one please yeah no, that's good you can go ahead <laughs> actually and roll there's out. a really good version of, there's a re there's actually a really good version of uh, Pac-Man for it. Surprisingly. Kind of All right, so not. we'll... Uh, actually, before we jump over to the Commodore Plus, because we don't have it, I, I'm not sure if we have it in any of the lists, if you want to go over to that uh, Atari system that you were talking about, Q. Uh, the Atari XG EGS? Yeah, I don't know if John has any info on that one or not, but... It's basically 800XL, but with cartridges, so it was supposed to be like an all-in-one system. It was basically like... The Atari 7800 and the Atari 800 put together, so it had modules, so it had like a keyboard and everything. Oh, okay. Um, but um, some of the games that were on it were really good, like Crystal Castles, like this one here. 1987 release. Great game. Had a had an ending in it too. It was a very good ending. One of the, one of the few games that had an ending in it, in the arcade at least. Yeah, didn't they say that Princess Peach is not in this castle? <laughs> I don't know what they said. I can't remember. I used to actually own the machine, though. You'd think I would have learned to beat it all so I could do it. But... but this is basically just like Pac-Man. If you haven't played uh, Crystal Castles before, it's just like uh, kind of like Pac-Man, but you're just picking up gems, and it used a roller bar controller. Um, I'm using the analog right now, and it works great. Surprisingly fluid motion in that game. Yes. Yeah, definitely You can also is. jump over them, yeah. But uh, it's actually a really good port of this, uh, of the actual game, because it's, it's a very graphic intense game. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> you got eaten by the palm trees. What the hell? Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That's broccoli with a rotten stem. <laughs> That's what it looks like, pretty much, yeah. Well, all right, let's go ahead and pop on over to the Commodore Plus 4. If I can get out of here. There we go. All right. You said you wanted the plus four? Yeah, the plus four. So what do you got for info on that, John? Uh, Commodore plus four, at least 1984. Uh, and the four actually stood for the Office suite that it was included that it was included with it. So word processor, spreadsheet, database, and graphing. That was the four, and uh, it was marketed more for business actually than it was for a game a gaming system. <laughs> if I can find it. If you can find it. The Vic, there's the Commodore 64. Where'd it go? Where'd who? It was there, go? guys. It was there. Yeah, it's under P for pet, isn't it? Yeah, pet. There it is. There we go. Too many systems, guys. There we go. Airwolf, the game that infuriates everybody. Made by the creators of E.T. No. <laughs> <laughs> just just kidding or Indiana Jones on the Atari 2600 on some of these um, because this is just how the system was uh, sometimes they required controllers in port 2 or port 1 sometimes you'll have to go in and you'll have to actually change your um, controller yeah, so this brings up a good point, right? That some of these, or there's a lot of these more obscure systems that actually require you to have 
a keyboard as well, right? Right. This is one of them. If you want to set certain things. Once you get everything set, you're all set. There we go. Oh man. Yeah, this is why everybody complains. <laughs> this is this this is the game. You can't beat it. You can't. You, you, no one can get past the first part of it. That's what everyone hates it. It's like I got to yeah. be able to do better than that. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh my God! I got out. <laughs> oh 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 my God! Out of the screen. You almost got there, man. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> What's it have to do with the TV show? Have you ever seen Airwolf TV show with a big old thing like that? Big old skull shooting. Whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's like, what the hell? All right, so let's go ahead and keep rolling here, um, and we'll move into uh, Neo Geo CD 32. Yeah. All right, John. Uh, what do you got for info? You mad at me, but I forgot this one. Hold on, I'll, I got you. Speak slow, because it takes uh, forever to load an Indio GOC. Yeah, released in uh, September '94, four years after the cartridge-based uh, system. Uh, and I think it was due to. I, I think they did it be, so it could offset the cost, so they could actually sell it too. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so you bring up a good point about this queue, right? Is that a couple of these newer systems, or a few of them, they do take you know a little bit of time to load, and then there's some of these older ones where um, you know literally they take a long time because that's what happened originally, especially the tape-based systems, right? right? And then and then there are some of these CD-based ones where they just were not optimized uh, hardware-wise to um, to parse and to buffer the content itself. Yeah, they said the load times were between 14 and 28 seconds between rounds when they did it. That was like their biggest criticism of the system. Right, yeah. They even released a second version that was a two-speed CD-ROM, but that was only in Japan. But um, even then, it was still too slow for everybody. I don't so. feel like, the, hey, man, in between rounds, it gives you a chance to go get another drink, you know, get yourself another soda, get yourself a beer, get you some chips, take a whiz. PC gamer back yeah, but we're old now. But if you were back then, you didn't want to do that back then when yeah, you were a teenager. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you're a teenager, you wanted to do whatever, you know. Just well, heck, even people today that are playing, gonna play these, you know, for the first time, you know, they're gonna think, you know, what the heck's going on? Why is this so slow? And well, it's just the way the system was inherently. I mean, take a look. Well, what's at crazy that. is if, if the people uh, realize that it's even still speeding it up. Like if they did Commodore 64 with a tape drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you would load for 10 minutes and then you would die and then have to wait another 10 minutes in the old days, you know? Without a uh, fast loader, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I had the Epic's fast load cartridge on mine. So, this is a cool game. This is kind of like Bionic Commando meets Metal Slug. And you can, what's cool is, is you can actually just go, um, if I can figure out which the, what the control was, but um, you, can you can go back in the background. Yeah, you can go in the background. Yeah. There you go. But you can go in the back. You can go in between the background and the foreground. It's pretty neat. Yep, definitely so. Well, all right. Um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. I mean, um, Q wanted to go ahead and touch on the the new N64 core. So um, while you're getting over to that, we can kind of discuss that because it's a relatively uh, more recent uh, update, right? Uh, it, all I know is that someone said they ported it, and I'm like, okay, let me give it a try. And everything I've tried on it. Seems to run so much smoother and looks really nice. Here, you guys will be able to see here in a second. Yeah, the the one day I popped in and did that, and Conquers runs so nicely compared to any other option. Believe it or not, the one that I could tell the most. Oh, you're an MSX uh, tone. Oh yeah.
That's a setting you can turn off too in ES. I always do it. Yeah, on my yeah, yeah. Fat. Well, see, I, I have it on the other. Remember the other theme, but you guys wanted me to switch, so I Whatever. usually keep it on the other. <laughs> blah blah blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Now, Wave Race on the regular plugins um, says it you know runs full speed. It just seems smoother on the NX plugin. I don't know if that's because it's a Dynarec, isn't the NX a Dynarec? Yeah. Plug in. Let's make sure I'm using it. Do I even have it installed? No, I don't. So guess what, guys? We're gonna show somebody how easy it is to do it. Yeah. Oh, remember, you guys? I redid my image. So hold on one second. I guess we can just wrap it up now if you want. <laughs> well, how long is it gonna take? Oh no, it takes like two seconds. It's not. All it's right. not long at yeah, all. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and install it quick. We're here. Might as well. On the bad bit of info anyway, right? Yeah, might as well do it. it takes yeah. longer to get to the settings menu than it does to actually do it. We're definitely creeping well past what I had expected for time, but that's all right because, you know, anybody's really, truly interested, they're going to hopefully find this not just informative but kind of fun as well. So, And it is our first installment, so, you know, it kind of... Um, we'll get better, we promise. Yeah, yeah. I promise nothing. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. NX, and it takes about a minute, minute and a half, maybe. Watch it make a liar of me here. Yeah. With your dial up speeds. It's all yeah. right. Discord's having a really hard time with that text scrolling through. It's all digitizing and everything. Is it? Yeah. I can see it fairly well. I was going to say, mine looks really smooth. Losing. I'm watching it on my TV as we broadcast. Uh, as we, uh, well, I'm just streaming my mirror cast stuff. But hopefully this finishes so you guys can see how well Wave Race runs. And you're right, with the Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, that's the best I've seen it run, Conqueror's Bad Fur Day as well. But it just takes too long to get into the actual game for Conqueror. Oh, man. Forget uh, <laughs> the intro. Yeah, exactly. You have to wait like 30 minutes for the intro. Well, that, you know... Actually, one of the advantages of the Lib Retro Core is we now have Fast Forward on Conqueror's. True, 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 true. true. There you go. But it does... What was that last part there, Neon? It doesn't speed it up by all that much, but it, it makes a difference. Yeah, as, as kind of a funny side story, I don't know how many times I've talked with um, ETA Prime on the phone, and we just talked about different things, and he's 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 been like, he's like, dude, I don't know how many times that I have shown off Conquer's Bad for a Day, and never yes. do I ever remember to keep a copy of a save file. He's like, I, don't I was know. gonna say we should start making save files for everything. So like for all these RPGs and stuff like that. Yeah, so you don't have to wait 90 years. Yep. Well, and that's the that's the funny thing. I literally remember last summer when he was doing a preview for us of our very first build. He was talking about that, you know. And then a couple weeks later, you know, um, we were talking about it again, and he was doing some more testing after we'd made some other changes and and doing a preview video. And he, he was just like, he calls me up. He's like, man, he's like, I've, we just got done talking about this. I'm like, what do you, what, what's going on? He's like, conquers. I couldn't help but to laugh. I said, what about it? And he says, I, I did that. I did that preview for you. And like a dummy, I didn't copy the save before I blew away the SD card to use it for something else. <laughs> I don't know. As, as Q was saying, RPGs are really bad for it. Like, I was playing one just like two days ago that had over an hour before you had control of your character. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So, real quick while he's doing this, you know, some people say, so this is kind of like a, a, a nuance thing, right? An experience thing. You know, we don't have on the video saying, hey, immediately after the video, press. A to get into the launching menu, right? So that's just something where you get used to it. I mean, John will tell people, 
to beat that button like a Cherokee drum and you'll be able to launch it. Yeah, um, you got to be quick. But once you get it figured out, it's really not that bad. It's just the fact that this board moves so much faster. I mean, I have the same kind of situation. I just, I just, I wish I could, I wish I could see the people trying to like whack the crap out of this button to try to get into this menu and not have, not have it happen. To them. Right. But I don't get to see that, you know. Yeah. So just as as well, right? Um, Q is recording this so that he can post this, um, all this captured footage as well separately. So. It doesn't look as good either here through the Discord um, sharing that we got going on as it does on the screen when you play it, right, Q? So uh, at least I'm assu I would assume so because uh, I know that we've done a bunch of settings, tweaks, and stuff to make things look pretty nice. <laughs> you guys are making me. Hold on one second. <laughs> Just retire. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that, that's ridiculous. I can't leave on that note, guys. What that was always worse than the helicopter. Well, I was trying, yeah, but I was trying not to. Uh, I had it on mute again, once again, and so I was like, I was trying to unmute it, and then like, so I'm like, oh, forget that shit. All right. So now, as you guys can see, it looks really nice. Well, you might not be able to see on the Discord server, but yeah, it's it's a uh, very, 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 very crisp and it's very smooth. I don't know if you can tell the frame rate smooth or not, but. Well, listen, it's so new, really. We haven't had a, we haven't had, I even had a chance to look into the config files yet and see what we can do as far. As right, you know, we haven't even done any tweaking. This is just straight out, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I'm sure we can get it even better than this. Yep. Hopefully, we can get Cruising USA to stop that one little oh, stutter. Oh my, that's like the, that's my. That's, that's annoying, right man. There. That's the killer. Isn't that still prevalent though? <laughs> or I mean, it's still. A happens with this core too right right now as it yeah, is though out of it the does but it's not as bad okay um and for some reason it seems that this core like catches up okay like if i do the san francisco race on cruising usa mm -hmm. um it runs pretty good okay which is weird yeah so i i'm thinking we can do a lot of tweaking and stuff you know and get it working really nice that'd be awesome well all right then guys i think um on that note we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the video here um definitely want to thank Hubert uh, for the time he's put together to, to get this going as he crashes into one of the balloons. Uh, and, I was on uh, first place, too. So I was on uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, and, uh, of course, John as well and uh, Neon. Um, you never know. We might have Eric join on one of these episodes, kind of just sit in the background. It's completely up to him. But, you know, I, I think that people are going to be pretty happy with this, and I know that we're all super excited for this to come out. So... Last thing that I need to say is, is uh, you know, if especially if you're new to it, welcome to the retro arena. Um, we've got all kinds of big things planned on the horizon, and we look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. So see y'all later.